Brought to you by Almond Auctions, the worldwide leader in antique tractor auctions. Three acres of corn and a large chicken coop might make you think otherwise. But for tractor enthusiast Dr. Leo Milliman, home is in downtown Ames, Iowa. We came here in 1978, bought a house and ended up owning more land in the backyard than we thought. Uh, runs down here to my left to the Skunk River and basically we're in the city of Ames across the river's country. A physician and urologist today, Leo's childhood was spent on a farm in Spencer, Iowa. Like many farm boys growing up, his love of tractors took hold early. After age eight, uh, I was hired to work on the farm, but I never got to drive the tractor again. I was always on the rack or up in the hay mile throwing the bales. So I said, when I get to be a big kid, I'm gonna own my own tractor, and now I'm in my 50s and own some two cylinders of my own. One of the most prized two cylinders in the Good Doctor's collection is a 1959 John Deere 630 with a mounted model 227 corn picker. Well, this uh, 630 tractor, John Deere tractor, about 1959 and 60, that was the last of the two cylinders. And with it is a 227 mounted two row picker. Uh, those days corn was planted 40 inch rows, this would go adjustable 38 to 40 inch, but that's it, because the tractor wheels went right down the middle of the row. 40 inches, as you know, was considered the standard width of a horse, so that's the way farming was, was 40 inch rows. This green machine is also equipped with a number 50 sheller unit that weighs in at almost 1,200 pounds. It took about 30 minutes for a farmer to attach this implement that allowed them to switch between ear corn and shelled corn. They came out about 1957 by John Deere, and farmers were learning that it was a lot more efficient if they could shell the corn in the field, leave the cobs, leave the trash in the field. It made good humus for the future, bring the corn in, ready to feed the livestock. I think in the 50s, maybe the 40s, 85% of all the grain raised on a farm was kept on the farm for the livestock, and this way they had it ready to go right to the livestock on the farm. So, how does a busy doctor have time for a medical practice in the city? And tractors on the farm? Well, it doesn't hurt to have a good friend who's got a knack for restoring classic tractors. Well, I think it's the best tractor John Deere ever built. That's the last of the two-cylinder and the 630 and the 620, and them seem to be the best one, I think. As far as standing up and usability and the work they do for their size, I think it's the best one John Deere ever built. Leo and Paul met in 1988 when they both got involved in the Central Iowa Two-Cylinder Tractor Club. Paul did the restoration work on the 630 on his farm in rural Ames. Leo bought it over at Guthrie Center, and it was a working machine, and we brought it home, and I took the sheller off and the picker off and just kind of hand sanded all of it, painted the picker and the sheller. This fella had used it, uh, and this was this, you know, within the last eight years. Uh, six years ago, in fact. Uh, he'd used it on a small livestock operation and had to convert to smaller rows so this would no longer be usable in his cornfield. So it went right from the field. We brought it, we restored both the tractor and the picker. Haven't run it since, but it ran right in the field up till the day we restored it. Less than 100 miles from the fields it once worked, this rig didn't have to travel far for its retirement. With everything functioning mechanically, Paul says the restoration took just 78 hours from start to finish. Bought one new, I knew how to take it off and put it on and everything, so that was no, it was no problem at all. We was lucky to find one in that good a condition. They were simple, easy to work on. Most farmers could work on them themselves. I can still work on them myself. I go to a new car or a new tractor and you plug it into a computer and I know a little bit about computers, but not enough to fix a car. Luckily, you didn't need it for these things. What you do need is a love for farming equipment of the past and the sound of those big two-cylinder putt-putts. Got our low gear down. Look down in here, it's got screens on the side to protect the engine so it doesn't suck trash in. Awful dusty in some cornfields. Lower the unit. Right down by the front wheels, there's rollers on either side that when you turn tight, you're going down a 40 inch row, 38 to 40 inch row with this. You just have to keep it lined up. A 
Another unique feature is the aluminum radiator inlet, which gives this hardworking machine a little bit of breathing room. Up on the front, you see the silver, it's called a super scoop. This was an aftermarket adaption for this tractor. It's an M&W Super Scoot. And that went over the front. We took the front uh, part of the tractor off, set that on it, and it allowed fresh air to get down to the radiator to cool the tractor. So this thing would be working hard, pulling two rows at a time, and a lot of dirt and trash would be down here where it was picking. This draw fresh air in from the top. Complete with power steering, live PTO and live hydraulics. This last of its kind tractor with the rare model 227 corn picker has got a little bit of everything. And for this dear doctor, it's also a little piece of home. I'm fascinated by the history and happy that I'm a little part of it. I'm a urologist, I'm a doctor, but I grew up in a farm, I live in a farm, I know where it came from.